Hey guys, happy Saturday. And yay, it's Saturday. So I just want to say that you guys might see me look away at times. And that's because I have my new webcam on my big screen TV. And it is um, right next to my notes. So you might see me look away like I just did. So I apologize for that. So I'm going to get right down to it tonight. Tonight is going to be like part one of probably, I don't know, 25 parts. And what inspired me tonight to do this 20-part series is all about guilters. And I know you're probably like, why are you even addressing guilters? I'm going to tell you why. Because looking for information, anything new on this case, besides stuff we already know, but stuff that's like engaging to talk about, it, there's really not a lot out there. So in not wanting to disappoint you guys and still keeping things going, I know I promised you guys two videos a week, so to keep everything going... I was like, so what the fuck am I going to talk about? And I decided I'm going to address guilters. And I'm not going to address guilters like, you know, hey, how could you say he's guilty? I decided that I'm going to go through po point by point in alphabetical order or timeline order to the best that I can. Now, mind you, my dates are not going to be perfect. I will not deny that. It's not going to happen. The other thing that won't be perfect is my memory of exactly what happened when it happened and how it happened sorry guys as much as i love this case and as much as i've studied this case i haven't really delved into the files in like over a year and to be quite honest i put a lot of time and energy into this case so if my dates are wrong please don't rail me for it i don't honestly remember and i really don't feel like going back over every little detail so I'll have like the right week. I just may not have the right day. And I hope you guys are cool with that and understand where it's coming from. Okay, so in looking over Reddit and looking over all these different things, I sat there going, what am I going to address about the guilters? And one really, really interesting topic that came up is how used to be innocent are now guilty. And I don't really totally understand how they can say that and the best that i just absolutely have to laugh at is how oh we're all lawyers because we watched a documentary no be, we're not detectives either because we read a case we are interested and nobody thinks well at least nobody that i know thinks he's guilty based on the movie i'm, I'm sorry thinks he's innocent based on the movie alone in order for you to judge either guilty or innocent it has to be based on the movie if it's not based on the movie it's based on personal intuition and god help you god help me if i'm on if i'm convicted of something i'm sorry if i'm charged with murder and i have a jury that bases shit on their opinion the law is not about opinion and i know i've discussed this before but it just kind of felt like it needed to be reiterated reading what was in on Reddit and all these other sites about him being guilty because it just doesn't add up. So to get started, uh, one of the things I'm gonna address is I'm gonna do like a 20 part series that's gonna be broken down piece by piece. I'm not gonna do each video to be like an hour. No offense, one, I know you did great with it, but that's not me. I do short 10, 15 minute videos, sometimes longer, but I decided that I'm really gonna break this down date by date. Again, my dates may not be perfect, so I'm going to give like kind of like a week long. And I'm not getting into every single detail, but what I am going to do is address the details that were not addressed in Making a Murderer. The movie, the documentary, whatever you want to call it, the docudrama. Because this way it shows that a lot of us were found stuff that wasn't in the movie. It was from reading. It was from research. So it kind of, I want this whole series of videos to really wipe out the fact, oh, well, they just watched a documentary and they think he's innocent. No, it's so much more than that. It's so much bigger than that. And I'm going to really show you why and how it's so much bigger. Okay, so starting with the first week, and all tonight's video is going to be is the first week, November 3rd, all the way to November 8th, when stuff was found. Okay, so here is a brief timeline of how the circle started. I'm not even getting into all the previous stuff, just how the circle started. So November 3rd, there was a certified 
document. Now, again, I'm going to say the week of November 3rd, because I can't remember if it was exactly November 3rd, then I think maybe it was November 6th, but I know it was the first week of November. There was a certified police report. I did a video on it. Uh, Dave Sale did a video on it. Johnny did a video on it. Everybody did a fucking video on it. That there was a certified police report showing that the RAV4 was impounded. And oddly enough, this was the same day, which is why I say it's the third, that Sergeant Colburn called in the plates of the car that he obviously found. The owner of the RAV4, according to the plates, was Teresa Hubbock. Um, she was apparently missing. But on the police report, the official police report on November 3rd, it said that she was presumed kidnapped. So, okay, a lot of people said that, oh, maybe they write down the wrong date. I'm sorry, police don't put the wrong date. And if they do enter it wrong, they fix it. This was never fixed. Years later, it was never fixed. You know why? Because it wasn't a fucking mistake. They did it exactly the way that was. On the 3rd, her car was impounded. It was the same day that Colburn called in the plates. No mistake about it. Colburn didn't miraculously just come up with the plates on his day off, and they happen to match the RAV4, but it just doesn't happen. But I'm not even going to go so into that, because that was in the video, in the movie. So the other thing that happened on November 3rd was Carmen Bootwell was found dead of an apparent drug overdose. If for some reason you don't know who Carmen Bootwell is, Carmen Bootwell was strikingly similar to Teresa. Same height, same weight, same body image. They had two different personalities, but their features were extremely familiar. They did share a bloodline. They weren't like sisters or first cousins or anything, but they did share a bloodline. Why this is so important, forget conspiracy theories. In, and I'm going to go into this in part two, but I do have to bring this up in part one because it kind of fits together. When the bones finally did go to the science lab, Ken Kratz sent a letter to the crime lab. I think it was the chick with the really bad hair. Again, don't quote me on it if I get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the girl with the big hair or the FBI and somebody he sent this letter to, which I'm going to post in a later video when I'm ready for it. But you can find it in a previous video. But he wrote a letter stating that he was shocked that they got any DNA out of the bones. Hmm. Well, to me and my investigators, like Lynn Johnson and some of the other people that investigated heavily back then, you know, the truth was, guess what, guys? We still believe that the bones were Carmen's. Because why was Ken Kratz so shocked that DNA matched by like seven loci or Lodi. But it, yeah, I think it was Loki. I couldn't pronounce it a year ago. I still can't pronounce it now. So deal with it. But why was he so shocked by it? He shouldn't have been shocked by it. it if it was supposedly Teresa's bones, then why would you be shocked by it? Now, FBI lab supposedly has to meet 13 in order to claim that it's somebody. They met seven. I firmly believe, and Lynn Johnson firmly believes, that those bones that were found are Teresa's. I'm, I'm sorry, are Carmen's. Again, go back a couple of videos from last year. I think I posted that somewhere around April or May. The title of the video is, Holy Shit, the Bones Aren't Teresa's or the Bones Are Carmen's. Through that video, Carmen's brother had contacted me, and we became friends. And one of the things that John told me is that on November 8th, she died on the 3rd. And November 8th or the 4th, it was either the 3rd or the 4th, my total apology, I forgot which day it was now. But she died, and she was wearing, she had to wait a couple of days. Um, the father... There was some misconception about the police paid for it and everything. John cleared that up and said that his father busted his ass to pay for her funeral, her crematory, crematorium. And at 1.30 on Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, November 8th. I don't know why I think it was a Wednesday. But on November 8th, she was cremated. She was immediately removed from the cemetery around 1.30 in the afternoon. At three, I think it was between three and four, the bones were found 
from the police officer. Okay, that right there was a red flag. And again, I may be missing, messing up the times or dates, but I know for a fact that the bones were discovered after Carmen had mysteriously left. They never saw Carmen's body after that. Now, why do I think this even ties in together? Oh, by the way, the Carmen, according to her brother, was um, buried in a jeans, blue jeans and a t-shirt. She was a wonderful girl who loved her brother, loved her mom, loved her grandma, and just, you know, had a rough time with some other things. And she wouldn't be the first and she won't be the last. So how does all this tie in and why is all this even matter besides my own theory that I believe those bones were Carmen's is because 24 hours, these FBI agents, 100 FBI agents had to wait in order to enter Avery property. That was between November 7th and November 8th. So you would think to yourself, why did they have to wait? Well, because you had Avery's dog. And because of Avery's dog being on site, nobody could go on site. Now, mind you, this is FBI. They deal with meth labs. They deal with Rottweilers. They deal with fucking dogs that attack them. They couldn't handle one German Shepherd on the property for 24 hours. Yeah, okay. And besides that, when they finally did get um, on site, is there any reason why CSI wasn't called? Is there any reason why the murder investigation, they found bones, they found evidence. So please explain to me how the yellow tape wasn't up. But not only that, this is even beyond any comprehension I have, and I will never in a thousand years understand this part, all right, so not only was CSI not called, there was not any CSI investigating this like a murder scene. I mean, come on, that's standard 101. It's like protocol. You have to do that. So not only that, but um, they allowed Ryan, Hillegas, and Scott onto the property. This is a fucking murder scene. That is unheard of in any crime, any investigation, any anything. You just don't do that. It's like like the law 101. It just doesn't happen. Well, it happens there. And I don't want to dig too much into that because that's like I've already done videos about that. But I'm just trying to piece everything together here. There is no way that that is like legit in any which way, shape, or form. Don't worry, we're not going to treat this as a crime scene. We're just going to make you, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We're going to make it worse for you. We're going to make the crime scene even worse by contaminating it. I couldn't think of the word. By contaminating the crime scene even more with people that knew her best that probably brought stuff to contaminate with Teresa. Now, the one thing they couldn't do, they could not get into Avery's trailer and contaminate it. Why? I don't know. I still don't know this answer. If you're contaminating the outside, why wouldn't you contaminate the inside? That's where the police went wrong. Very wrong, in my opinion. Now, mind you, I'm still only on the first few days. I haven't even gone past November 6th, speaking of. Also, on November 6th, I could go on about Carmen and this whole incident, but I'm going to save that for later because it also pulls up other things. But on November 6th, uh, I'm sorry, November, either November 4th or November 6th interview of Brendan when he was in the car. The police, I think it was Fassbender, specifically stated that Teresa had other appointments to go to that Avery was not her last stop. So someone needs to tell me when that changed, when Avery became her last stop. Because in my opinion, it didn't happen till the 8th. So this is what we have for a four dates. I just took up 15 minutes in a video, probably 10 minutes discussing this, for four dates. We have 10 years worth of dates, but do you guys see where I'm going with this? So if you're a guilter and you can tell me how just the first four make any sense at all, I am more than willing to listen. 
but I can assure you that I'm going to go through every single one of these pieces and really piece it together. And even if you want to say that you don't believe Carmen's, you know, bones or anything, I am totally cool with that. I get that. But think about everything else. Think about the CSI. Think about the murder scene. And again, I'm going to delve more into that, but I really don't want to do like a two hour video. And you guys know me once I get started, I may never stop. So I'm going to leave it that for the couple of dates and I will see you guys next week. And if I really see that there's so much that I'm writing down, I'm totally going to do like five videos a week. I'll do like one a night of like 10 minute skits just so you guys can see it. I haven't really decided yet, but I can assure you um, I won't be with makeup on because I don't get ready every day. So um, I hope you guys have a fantastic night. I'm going to go watch a movie and check out my other videos and make sure you subscribe and not only subscribe make sure you hit that little bell so you get notification when my next video comes out haters you can gladly leave i really don't give a fuck if you think i ramble or you don't like me if you don't like me don't watch me but for everybody else keep subscribing keep up the good work keep up the comments and my final note of the night i want to say my condolences to mr chris cornell's family if you're not a rocker, then you don't know the Chris Cornell, who is probably one of the greatest voices to ever rock, ever hit the stage. Um, from Soundgarden, Audio Slave, and he was just an incredible singer. Apparently committed suicide Wednesday night at MGM Grand in Detroit, Michigan, after a show from Audio Slave. So it's all over the news. And my condolences to his family. I still don't believe it was suicide. However, I'm not going to go with a conspiracy theory. So, again, hope you guys have a great night and enjoy. Peace out. Hope you like my video and subscribe.